Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, owners. Good morning, Sky Channel viewers. And welcome along to this special coverage of the TAB Ipswich Cup Barrier Draw. We're in beautiful Tulma Place here in downtown Ipswich, and the weather's fantastic. We've had a coffee this morning to warm us up, and Kian, looking forward to Ipswich Cup Day. Yes, certainly. Now, it's a race meeting that always attracts a large crowd, Paul. It's absolutely massive. I think they had over 15,200 people last year, and they're expecting the same this year. So very exciting times ahead. All right, without further ado, Let's speak to the chairman of the Ipswich Turf Club, uh, Wayne Patch. Wayne, you can have a few words and spruik up this big day on Saturday. Yes, thank, thanks, Paul. Uh, I'll just reiterate Paul's welcome to everyone uh, this morning, uh, all of the connections that are here, trainers, uh, my fellow committee and uh, the other distinguished guests. It's, uh, I've been here a long time in Ipswich and it's very rare in the middle of June to have a morning of about nine degrees minimum within mid-twenties during the days. And our friends at uh, the Bureau of Meteorology ensure us uh, that that's going to be the case all through the week. So uh, for those who uh, are watching this morning and haven't got their ticket to come to the Cup yet, there's no excuse from a weather perspective. Uh, this is a, a... It's actually the social highlight of the Ipswich calendar, uh, whether people are racing uh, fans or, uh, or just social... Uh, visitors, the, it's a, a, a once a, a year exercise where people get together. It's quite often that people don't see each other from year to year and it's at the cup. Um, we do have a, a great record of uh, a very large crowds in the top 20 race meetings across the nation from a, a crowd perspective, which is a, uh, a fine achievement for a city of this size, uh, particularly at this stage of the Winter Carnival when you're following on from the, the really wonderful gala days that have... Uh, the Brisbane Racing Club have just, uh, have just presented to us. Uh, so it's, it's a fantastic achievement for us to be able to get the, the community support. Now that support, of course, uh, has been an integral part of that support, of course, is the Ipswich City Council. We have a great relationship with them. It's a long-standing relationship and we're looking forward to that continuing for many years to come. The, uh, on the, uh, the board behind me, you'll see oh, there's too many for me to... Uh, to go through individually now, but sponsorship's a, a major part of a day the size of the Ipswich Cup. And uh, we have a long history uh, with our sponsors, very loyal, some new, we've got up there today, but others are, are very long standing supporters and uh, it's great for them uh, to continue uh, as sponsors of the Ipswich Cup and the Ipswich Turf Club itself. So uh, I'm really hopeful that uh, that everyone has a great day on Saturday. I want everyone uh, to spread the word, get as many, there's still room. We're, uh, we can get into up around 20,000 people on occasions, uh, pre-COVID. Uh, COVID does, uh, it has changed the way people operate and, uh, and look at their social calendar, particularly this year now, whilst we're sort of moving out of COVID a bit, but the, the flu season's upon us. So uh, people are a little bit uh, sensitive about uh, the crowds, but uh, I can assure you, if you're going to uh, be out and enjoy yourself, the open uh, air at the Ipswich Turf Club this Saturday, you're going to enjoy yourself and I can guarantee it. So thanks very much and uh, good luck to the connections uh, and I hope you draw well this morning at the barrier draw. Thanks very much. All right, thanks a lot for that, Wayne. It looks like it's going to be a great day weather-wise too on Saturday at Ipswich. They're tipping we might get a soft five track, but on the better side of a soft five. And obviously the forecast is outstanding. So if you're in the area and you haven't experienced an Ipswich Cup day, it would certainly be worth coming out and having a look because it's going to be huge. All right, it's time to get the barrier draw underway. I'd like to welcome Deputy Chief Steward Daniel Orish to the stage because we've got trophies, we've got some marbles here, Daniel. And uh, just explain how this barrier draw is going to work. Yep. Thanks, Paul. We um, normally we uh, drop all the marbles into the uh, machine here, pull out the the horse name, and then connections come up and and draw a trophy with the the barrier on there. So um, yeah, without further ado, we might get into it. Let's get into it. Sounds good. Daniel, we've also got Paul Zimmerman here today as well to oversee the barrier draw. So let's get started with this draw. It looks very fancy and I'm looking forward to it. First one. 
Horse, horse 14. Horse 14 is the first horse out. And the Paul? Top order. Top order. Top order, the first horse out. Is there connections here? Or? I'm not sure if we've got the connections here for 14, but we're going to get Wayne to draw this one. So Wayne will draw the uh, barrier for horse number 14. And he's drawn barrier 15. So Wayne, I don't know if you'll be asked back for the next one, but uh, not a bad start anyway. At least one of the bad ones is out of the way. All right, so 14 top order is barrier 15. The next horse, horse out 10. is number 10. Paul, number 10 is? Young blood. Young blood, all right. This is a big one of the main chances, Young Blood. And 10 from 10. There you go, Omen Punters. 10 from 10, Young Blood. So we're two horses down here in the draw. The next number out is? Number th horse three. Number three. Paul, number three is? Uh, Bartholomew Dias. Bartholomew Dias for Annabelle Neesham. And here's an Omen bet as well. Race three. Horse three, and number three, should I say. Horse three, number three, Bartholomew Dias. That's a lovely barrier there, uh, Annabelle Neesham. She'll be wrapped with that one, watching from wherever she is at the moment. Next horse out. Horse nine. Horse number nine. The Avon Prince. Tavion Prince. Horse number nine, Tavion Prince. One of Tony Gollan's runners. One. And has drawn barrier one. That'll be very handy for a horse like Tavion Prince, barrier one. Nice drawing. You can come back. Keep him handy. Next one out. Horse 12. Horse 12. Spencer. Spencer. David Van Dyke. Let's see, can David Van Dyke win another Ipswich Cup? 17. Barrier 17, it won't be easy for him out there, but he's won one before and he can win one again. Next number horse out. Number one. Number one, the top weight? Burdebeck. Burdebeck, John O'Shea's grey. And five. barrier five, I think John would be very happy with that. Barrier five for Burdebeck. Loves a bit of cover in the run. He should get that from barrier five. He'll be hard to hold out late. Horse Next eight. horse out is number eight. Street Dancer. Street Dancer, another one for David Van Dyke. This horse has won three of his last five. So he comes here in form and he'll be facing his toughest test on Saturday. And Wayne, you've redeemed yourself. He's come up with barrier two. David Van Dyke will be wrapped with that. So barrier two for Street Dancer. Don't go too far away, Wayne. After that draw, we'll horse get you back five. for another one. Uh, number five, Aaron Tree. Horse number five, Aaron Tree. Aaron Tree, number five. And barrier seven, barrier seven. All right, we're working through these quite well. Team, doing a great job here. Next horse, horse out 15. is horse number 16. 15. 15, 15. sorry, 15. Shikana. Shikana has drawn barrier nine. Shikana, barrier nine. Stephen Marsh trained Shikana. Next one out. Seven. Number seven, horse. Smart Meteor. Number seven, Smart Meteor. Smart Meteor for Chris Munts. And Barrier 12. That's not a bad draw for Smart Meteor there. It gives a bit few options early. I don't think Chris would be too disappointed with the 12. 16. Number 16, the next Dunhill. one out. Dunhill. Dunhill. Number 16, Dunhill for Kelvin Tyler. Bit of a Kiwi connection there. Barrier 8, perfect mid gate. You'd be happy with that. So, Barrier 8 for Dunhill. Next horse out 17. is 17. Lady Os Salerno. Which was that, sorry, Paul? Lady Salerno. Lady Salerno. Lady Salerno, the next one out for Ronald Cameron. And has Barrier drawn 11. 11. Legs 11. Lady Salerno for Ronald Cameron. Eight-year-old mare. She'll be trying to win an Ipswich Cup on Saturday. Horse, four. horse number four, the next one out. Swords drawn. Swords drawn. Certainly one of the better chances. Sean Ritchie and Cole Murray trained. Won the Hawks Bay Cup in New Zealand not far, not long ago and has come up with barrier 13. So 13 for the Kiwi, swords drawn. Next horse out. Horse two. Number two. Ballistic boy. Ballistic boy for Chris Anderson, second in the Lord Mayor's Cup. Chased New Marion home in the Q22 last week and has come up with barrier six. So ballistic boy, beautifully drawn in barrier six, coming through the right form race, you'd think, the Q22 last Horse week. 11. Number 11, the next one out. Honourable Spirit. Honourable Spirit. Honourable Spirit, the next one out for John Smurden. Barrier 16, not ideal, not ideal for Honourable Spirit, but uh, anything can happen from out there. And John Smurden, I'm sure he'll have this horse set for the big race there on Saturday. Next horse out. Horse, six. horse number six. 
Skyman. Skyman. Skyman number six for Chris Waller. He won this race with Danchai back in 2015. And what barrier did that one draw, Paul? Uh, 14, sorry. 14. Barrier 14 there for Skyman. Number 13. 13. The next one out. Number 13. Ostermere. Ostermere. Ostermere number 13 for Alyssa and Troy Sweeney. Barrier 4. Lovely gate. And that rounds us out. That rounds us out for the full field. All right, we'll get those assembled for you and get that put up on a graphic as soon as we can and we'll run through them all for you. But for now, that is the barrier draw. And uh, Tony Gollan, a couple of runners in the field, and Kian Holland, you're going to catch up with Tony now. Yes, I'm joined with Tony now. Now, Tony, you've done the double before. You've done the cup and the eyeliner on the same day. You've got two horses lining up in the cup, Tavion, uh, Prince and Youngblood. Did they do their main bits of work this morning? Yeah, they did. They did their main bits of work at Eagle Farm nice and early out on the A-grass. Um, we gave them a run at Eagle Farm the other day on the course proper there just to tune them up, to have them ready for this race on Saturday. So Tavion Prince lines up after just beaten, beaten over two and a half lengths at Eagle Farm, but that was a bit of a tick over run, wasn't it, from a freshen up? Yeah, it was. We ran them in the, the, Gold, the Gold Coast Cup, that 2400 metre race, right back at the start of the carnival, and it was just a a bit of a way to get to this race here at Ipswich so we sort of tossed up between whether we trial or whether we run over the 1800 and I just felt we'd give them the, the nice sort of easier run over the 1800 both knowing that both those horses Tavion Prince and Youngblood neither of them really appreciate that Eagle Farm track where they'll be much better suited back to Ipswich this weekend. And Youngblood was a good win uh, three back over the 2200 metres so distance no query. Yeah and no, both horses are, are crying out for this, this 2150 of, a, of an Ipswich Cup they both get to drop down to that minimum weight, which we saw them running really well at, you know, earlier on in the carnival. So off that Gold Coast Cup run, we just felt this race would suit. It's come up uh, reasonably strong, Ipswich Cup, and there's good chances in it. And I think these two will, will both present good value on Saturday. Now, with your preparations for your staying horses, how does it differ from your sprinters, or is it much similar? With these two here, because they were up nice and nice and fit early in the carnival, we're able to back off them, sort of give them ten days out in the treadmill and. Then from there, it was just a matter of building that little bit of fitness back up and, and both horses went into that run at Ipswich, just that little bit underdone. Both have come out of it nice and fit. Everything they come back from this morning was really good. So they're right back where they need to be now. And can you split the pair? Um, it's hard to. The barriers don't really make much difference to either of those. I mean, Tavion Prince will get a nice... They both won't be too far away and running. They'll both be sort of up on pace. Young Blood's probably the more genuine dower stayer of the two. Now, Paladas is also holding form really well, and he runs in the eyeliner. Can we recreate the 2014 double with Brave Ali and Alma's Fury this year? Yeah, I'm not sure. There's a two in the eyeliner, Vinco as well. Paladas is a bookie's favourite, I'm sure. He, he always finds one better, but he, he's drawn a little bit sticky in the eyeliner. But he, I've always felt he's that, that, that sort of horse who could win a race like this. I think it's an interesting race this year. Um, I actually like the fact Emer Emerald Kingdom has nommed in and it's held some of those horses back down in the weight. So it's an interesting race. Um, if Vinco can run as well at Ipswich as he does at Eagle Farm, he can be right there. But both horses are in really good shape and well weighted, which is important in a race like this. All right, looking good for Saturday. Thanks for that and all the best. No worries. Saturday. All right, now we've also got uh, a couple of other big feature races up at Ipswich on Saturday, apart from the Tab Ipswich Cup. We've got the City of Ipswich Eyeliner Stakes to be run over the 1350 metres. Uh, that's worth uh, $200,000. It's a listed race, of course, and also the listed Gay Waterhouse Classic to be run over 1200 metres for the Phillies and Mares. And we have got some of those fields apparently coming through right now. So as soon as we get those through, we'll bring them to you. And uh, we'll start with the Eyeliner Stakes. So let's start with the City of Ipswich Eyeliner Stakes. We'll have have a look at the fields and I think we've got barrier draws as well already done for that so let's see here we go we've got Emerald Kingdom for Robert Heathcote drawn 14 Desert Lords drawn the five Holyfield for Annabelle, Annabelle Neesham 16 last chance for Sean Dwyer in 12 Vinco Tony Gollan barrier seven and you can hear Estonia still around you've done well there with Vinco Charlize barrier six for Mar Eustace 
uh, Goss Bodden, barrier eight. Uh, she's the gift 11. Roman Aureus has drawn perfectly in three for Brian Wakefield. Red Chase for Desley Forster has drawn the 10. So they're the first 10 horses in the eye line. We've got a field of 18. Atwood Sender's drawn 17. Hilo's drawn the two. Sir Warwick, not ideal, barrier 18. Barney's Law, nine. Paladas, 13. Another one for Tony Gollan. Bargannon for David Van Dyke, 15. Our Birdson, four. And David Van Dyke's number 18 there, maybe the best, has come up with barrier one. So that's the eye line of stakes draw, but we've also got the Gay Waterhouse Classic draw for you now. And you can see here, number one, Archer's Paradox for David Murphy has drawn 18. There'll be a big smile on Richard and Will Freeman's um, dials because they've come up with barrier three for Juan Diva, a perfect draw for her. Kizakano 12, Majestic Shot 7, Tahitian Dancer 10, Willow Tito 13, Eloquently 17, Tycoon Evie 5, Centre Fire for Chris Muntz. This is a good one, Chris. Barrier one for Centre Fire. Not so good for Chris. Chris Waller's mare, Starla, she's drawn 19. And as we turn over the page, it's obviously a big field. We've got 20 runners for the Gay Waterhouse Classic. Pulank has drawn the six, Dash for Dreams, 16. Dragon Miss has drawn eight. Lady of Luxury, not ideal, Bjorn Baker, 15. Chez Black's drawn the 11 for Lindsay Hatch. Maybe the best, drawn Barrier 2 for David Van Dyke, but not so good for his stable mate, Joy to All. She's a real up-and-comer as well. She's come up with Barrier 20. Glitter Strip, 14. Brazen Gem, 21 for Annabelle Neesham. So she hasn't fared too well in those two uh, support races. And a number 20 Love Sensation drawn the four for Tony Gollum. So they're the two uh, support races there, but obviously feature races in their own right. There's Cassie's sister as well. Number 21 has drawn Barrier 9. All right, that Ipswich Cup has been finalised and put together. So let's run through that right now. The Tab Ipswich Cup, number one Birdebeck for John O'Shea's come up with the five, number two Ballistic Boy, six Bartholomew Diaz. Well, Annabelle, she might have drawn two well in the other two races, but she's drawn perfectly in the big one, the Tab Ipswich Cup, Bartholomew Dice drawn barrier three. Swords drawn, the Kiwi, were drawn barrier 13. Our intrigue for Chris Waller, barrier seven. As I said, Chris won this race with Donchai back in 2015. He's also got uh, number six Skyman drawn 14, Smart Meteor 12 Street Dancer, David Van Dyke's runner drawn the 2, Tony Gollins fared well with Tavion Prince drawn the 1 and Stablemate Youngblood has drawn Barrier 10 so Horse 10 from Barrier 10 and Horse 3 from Barrier 3 Number 11 Honourable Spirit has drawn out in 16 Spencer's drawn 17 Ostom is drawn well in 4 Top Order 15, Chicana 9 Dunhill 8 and Lady Salerno has drawn Barrier 11. Oh. All right, so that wraps up the barrier draws for the three feature races. I think we're going to take a quick break on Sky Thoroughbred Central and then Kian Holland will join me on stage. We'll have a quick chat about some of the main chances in these big races at Ipswich on Saturday. Well, welcome back. Uh, your Tab Ipswich Cup barrier draw morning, of course, and those three big races have been drawn now, and uh, connections and trainers, no doubt, and the punters will be scouring those barriers to try and work out where the maps will fit on Saturday at Ipswich as we charge into what should be a terrific day's racing, Kian Holland. We're looking at a soft five, maybe onto a good four track. The weather forecast is outstanding. It's a lovely warm morning here today at Ipswich. They threatened us it was going to be cold, but it certainly isn't that. And uh, just looking at that Ipswich Cup barrier draw, we are waiting for Tab Markets to come through. If they come through in the next 10 10 minutes will bring those to you but obviously if they don't Mark Olmus will bring them to you on Sky One as soon as they become available after 10 o'clock but first of all let's just touch on the Tab Ipswich Cup and those barrier draws what did you make of it I thought Tony Gollan's horses obviously both fed well yeah no, I think they did too and I'm, st I'm sticking a little bit with the locals this year I want a um, big watch on Ballistic Boy uh, a little bit of a miss last start, but before that was a really nice win. And he's a horse that appreciates Ipswich too. He's a one start, one winner there. And David Van Dyke's horse in Street Dancer uh, is obviously a progressive horse, building a nice record in those metropolitan races. And of course, he won the race in 2016 with Morris. I think Damien Brown wrote him. Yeah, that's exactly right. I think uh, Annabelle Neesham would be very happy with the draw for Bartholomew Diaz. Coming off a strong win at Eagle Farm in strong city grade last start, and that was a bit of a surprise win, but there was no fluke about the win. Came from last in a fairly slowly run race and charged through the line. So I think that's the, probably the recent form guide that punters will probably have a look at heading into the Ipswich Cup on Saturday. And uh, we may be getting that market through already. So as soon as we get that, we'll bring that up for you. The other horse I thought that would run really well uh, could be Street Dancer. But there you can see now, Bartholomew Diaz has come up favourite with the tab fixed odds at $4. Our intrigue for Chris Waller, $4.50. 
and Skyman next in line. There another one for Chris Waller at six dollars. So Chris Waller obviously having a target race here. Number one, Birdebeck for John O'Shea. He's probably the other horse I really like. One thing with Birdebeck he needs is a reasonably firm surface. He just doesn't go in the wet. That should be guaranteed for him on Saturday. Young Blood at eleven dollars. Ballistic Boy fifteen. Smart Media fifteen. Street Dancer also at fifteen dollars. So you can see already it's a good competitive open betting race uh, for that Ipswich Cup. Swords drawn at twenty one. Tavion Prince twenty six. A few roughies. Honourable Spirit fifty one. Spencer the Barrier draw didn't help there at fifty one. Ostomy the Barrier would have helped into fifty one. Top order fifty one. Chicana fifty one. And Dunhill at one hundred and one dollars. So what do you make of that? Well, Tavion Prince is probably a good roughie because the um, the defeated Eagle Farm over the eighteen hundred metres. The horse had come back in distance off a freshen up. And I do think, as I said to Tony, it was just a little bit of a barrier trial, a tick over run. So stepping up to a more uh, desirable distance, I think it'll be a big improver. Certainly will. And just looking at that market count, I would say punters are going to have a lot of different opinions in the Ipswich Cup this year. That market will probably chop and change a bit. Bartholomew Dears was big odds when he won at Ipswich, uh, won at Eagle Farm last start. So I'm not guaranteed that he'll even start favourite, but he's obviously gone up favourite off that good draw and that win. So at this stage, Bartholomew Dears, the one the tab uh, price assessors have as the horse to beat. We'll see if there's any other markets come up. Let's have a quick touch on the eyeliner. This is the City of Ipswich eyeliner stakes. $200,000 race. It's always one of the best races Such on the calendar. Such a popular race. It's it is. So Everyone popular. wants to win it. They go mad up yes. front. They're swooping late. I think they'll be spread across the track. It'll be a good competitive finish. And uh, if we get in a market, we'll see. It is obviously Emerald Kingdom would have been one of the favourites coming through the Archer win, of course, and coming through the stronger form lines, but uh, didn't have much luck with the barrier draw. Uh, there's no market available yet, though, Kian. So I think Desert Lord, uh, probably another one that'll be hard in the market last year chance should be there. Vinko drew quite well mm -hmm. and I think Vinko is probably one of the horses that I think it will be very hard to beat. And I'm with Paladas as well because it's just a horse that's holding its form well. It's going to be good. I think for some of these horses as well as Eagle Farm raced, it's going to be good to see some form lines away from Eagle Farm with these metropolitan horses and how well has Ipswich been playing? Well, it's been playing fantastically because it wasn't that long ago when we had the floods that mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't race there and then we we're on a heavy 10. and it took a fish on the track. They found a fish in the strait. It took a while to uh, get out of that heavy 10 range, but the last couple of weeks we've been out there and watching those races and it's just been getting better and better and the actual cover of the track it, it's yeah. never faltered it's been fantastic all the way through so it's just a matter of getting that underlying water well and truly away from the from the course proper and uh speaking to a, a ceo over of ipswich turf club uh, tim dunn during the week he's very confident we'll be on the better side of a soft five fantastic and i think the rail will be at i think it's out half a meter but i think what we've found from covering meetings there afterwards uh, after the floods the rail's been out probably five meters or worse but there's no fast lane so back closer to that true it's going to be fantastically fair exactly right no the rail's been out at least five meters sometimes seven so they've kept that inside pad of grass absolutely spot on for the big meeting on saturday so looking forward to it the tab ipswich cup the other big one was the gay waterhouse there on saturday but uh, again i don't think we've got any markets available yet from tab but uh, we gave you the barrier draw earlier and those markets will be coming through very shortly they're working feverishly to get those markets out and mark Olmos will bring them to you so stay tuned to sky one's coverage and all of those markets for the i Liner and of course the uh, the Gay Waterhouse Classic will be available shortly. So looking forward to that, Kian. And just before we go, if we're going to ask you for one tip in the in the Tab Ipswich Cup at this stage, I'm going to I'm going to side with Birdebeck. Yes. Which way are you going to go? I'm going to go a bit rougher with Street Dancer and Tavion Prince as the improver. Well, they're both big odds, those two horses. So Kian Holland, she's been on form, in form. She's out tipped me the last two meetings, and she has let me know about it. All right, thanks a lot for joining us today. Thanks for all the Ipswich. Our turf club, the committee for inviting us out here to host this this morning. It's been a lot of fun. Hopefully we get a big crowd out there on Saturday. We're expecting a beautiful day weather-wise, perfect track. And as you can see already, we've got some very competitive racing coming your way. Thanks for joining us. Mark Olmos will carry on after this break. But for now, Keanu and I will say goodbye.